Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Elizabethtown Sports Park, where tonight this 17th district championship game will be played between the Central Harden Bruins and the Panthers of Elizabethtown. Starting lineups tonight for Central Harden. They come in 17 and 13 on the season, 7 and 2 in 17th district play. Leading off will be the shortstop, Lucas Lee. He's followed by Lucas Thompson. Hitting third will be the pitcher, Kellen Brandenburg. Hitting cleanup will be Reese Cowley. Mason Gardner will hit fifth and play left field. Hitting sixth, it'll be Chase Price, followed by Sander Lucas. The DH, Tucker Walters, will hit eighth, and rounding out the Central Harden lineup will be Caden Elmore. For Elizabethtown, defensively today, starting in left field, Ryder Gregory. Center field will be Grayson Hayner. Right field is Carter Moberly. Third base, Hendricks Thomas. Shortstop, Jordan Price. Caden Davis will play second base, Austin Jennings will be at first in the battery today for the Panthers. Bryce Estes behind the dish, and it'll be Reed Sherrard on the mound. Comes in with a 7-3 record, 4.57 ERA, 45 strikeouts, 33 walks. Should be a good ball game, Bobby. Yes. Uh, I was fortunate to call both of their games earlier this year. Uh, Elizabethtown won the first one 11 to, I mean, sorry, 3 to 2. And it was Central Harden storming back just a few weeks ago and uh, winning 15 to 3. The visiting team in both cases won uh, the game. Well, both teams come off shutouts last night. Central Harden blanked North Harden 8 0. E Town just absolutely obliterated Fort Knox 15 0 in that run rule game. Both teams look like they're up to the task tonight. They want a championship, and we'll see who earns it here at the end of this ball game. Lucas Lee snaps to the plate, hitting 302 on the season. He scored the opening run of both of the games earlier in this season. In fact, um, in the last game they played, he started the ball game off with a double to the gap. Well, two and zero oh now the count. And we are at the sports park. North Harden um, played it a little cautious. They could have probably played it north, would have taken a lot of diamond dry. Um, able to play it out here. Good field conditions around. The field's a little soggy in the outfield. That catches the outside corner. Uh, the infield is all turf, the outfield all grass. Two and one now the count. And foul back, two and two. This will be hit towards left field. Little drop Gregory in falls in front of him. And a single for Lucas Lee. 
That's going to bring up the catcher, Lucas Thompson, hitting 329 on the year. This is the first time that Central Harden has faced Sherrard. They faced uh, Austin Jennings in the first matchup this year, and then it was Hendricks Thomas in the second matchup. That's in there for a strike on the outside corner. Add some heat on that one. Now, in games this year, in calling Central Harden, Coach Cruz likes to run on the second pitch. Not sure that Lee's going to do that. He's got an average lead at first. Over, not in time. Well, I think uh, Etown was planning for him to run because the catcher sat up way on the outside of part of the plate that time. Curveball bunted down the third baseline. It's foul. Thomas does a good job picking up in foul territory. Everybody will reset and it'll be 0 and 2 to Thompson. Last night, Thompson scored a run and, and uh, got a run batted in. High fastball. First out of the day is a strikeout. So with one out, runner at first, that's going to bring up Kellen Brandenburg. Comes in hitting 303 on the year. Now here early in the game, just through those first two batters, Sherrard thrown a little bit more on the outer half of the plate. See if he continues that with Brandenburg. Lee going on the pitch. That one's gonna go high and right. Good job by Jordan Price to come from behind to stop it. That one sailed on Estes. So runner in scoring position. That curveball's in there for a strike. Kevin, Kevin Claycomb behind the dish tonight at the umpire. Called a lot of 17th district ball games, not just this year, but over his career. Good crowd tonight. Everybody seems to be into it as we start the game. Change up stays up. Two and one now, the count to Brandenburg. Good inside fastball right at the knees. Two and two now to Brandenburg. A player not in the lineup tonight, Zach Spurrier. Uh, Spurrier, after uh, he was running in the last game these two played, he pulled up coming into third base. And um, just precaution, he has pitched since then, but not hit. That one too far inside. So it'll run the count full of three balls and two strikes. Second. High chopper. Thomas with it. Cross the infield in time, but that moves Lee up to third. So two down. To be the cleanup hitter, Reese Cowley now coming to the plate. Cowley with the highest average of the starters for Central Harden, 375 on the year. Ball. This one hit out towards Price. Down the line, that's it. And so after surrendering an opening base hit, Sherrard shuts him down. There were no runs on one hit, one runner left on base, and no Elizabethtown errors. So we head to the bottom of the first inning. So we're 0 0. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates.
etownapartments.com, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Etown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Line up today for Elizabethtown. Leading off will be Caden Davis. He's followed by Jordan Price. Hitting third will be Grayson Hayner. Bryce Estes hits cleanup. First baseman Austin Jennings will hit fifth. Eli Barker, the DH, hits sixth. Hendricks Thomas will be hitting seventh. He's followed by Carter Moberly. And rounding out the Panther lineup will be Ryder Gregory. Defensively today for the Bruins. Left field will be Mason Gardner. In center, it's Chase Price. Right field, Caden Elmore. Around the infield, Reese Cowley at third. Lucas Lee at shortstop. Devin Hubbard will be at second base. Sander Lucas at first. And the battery today for the Bruins. Lucas Thompson behind the dish. Kellen Brandenburg on the mound. Brandenburg 2-3 and three on the year with a 3.73 ERA. He has 30 strikeouts to just 13 walks. Jeff, what was it that you saw yesterday in E-Town? What did they do? Obviously, a 15-0 game uh, put several runs on the board, but what are things that they were doing right yesterday? They just uh, they made contact with the ball body. It was... Uh, they made no mistakes. I mean, that was just, they came up, they made contact, got runners on base, advanced the runners. It wasn't so much what E-Town did, it was what Fort Knox was unable to do. They weren't able to throw pitches. Uh, there were a lot of wild pitches. A lot of runners advanced and scored on bases on balls or balls that got past the pitcher and uh, or past the catcher. I mean, it was uh, it was an obvious mismatch from the word go yesterday. The, starting pitcher for Fort Knox through 61 pitches in an inning and a half and uh, just struggled to get any outs. But E-Town ran the bases well. Uh, when the opportunity to steal was there, they stole. So they ran a lot. Uh, they stole several bases. They just didn't make any mistakes at all. It was a, it was a very well-played game by E-Town, a very poor game played by Fort Knox. But uh, the pitching yesterday, Alexander Lucas pitched for Elizabeth Town, and he was as solid as they come. He, he didn't get in any trouble, didn't make any mistakes, always seemed to be ahead in the count. Now, on the flip side, Central Harden in a highly anticipated game with North Harden um, after they had split the, the regular season, the defense for Central Harden pitches a shutout uh, against a, a team that had scored 11 against the Bruins earlier. As we go through this, talk about Central Harden's defense from yesterday and what they did really, really well. Leading off will be Caden Davis, the second baseman, comes in with a 391 average. This one hit hard to center field. Going back on it is Price, who makes the catch. First pitch hit deep to center field. Price, one of the hardest balls to catch is when it's been hit right at you. He turned a couple of different ways, stayed on it, makes the catch. Jordan Price, the shortstop for the Panthers, now to the plate, hitting 245 on the year. Central yesterday defensively caught everything that came at them. I mean, they, uh, and some of them were well hit balls. This one well hit to right field. Elmore out there, rolling back, makes the catch for the second out of the inning. And that's going to bring up the center fielder, Grayson Hayner. Hayner with the highest average for Elizabethtown at 453 on the year. I know Brandenburg's only thrown four pitches total, but seems to be keeping it up. No wind here today in overcast, nice weather. Most players in short sleeves. That was a high fastball, gets him swinging. 0 and 1 the count. Yesterday, Hainer, he had two hits and three at bats. I went up, back up the middle, slow roller. Lucas Lee over with it. Across, in time. And so it's a one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. As we head to the top of the second inning, 
score 0 0 between the Panthers and the Bruins. Tune in weekly for all local HCEC TV programs airing on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable Channel 2, Spectrum Communications Channel 184. You can always check out our past broadcasts on our YouTube channel. Just search HCEC TV, subscribe to our channel, get all your local community sports and events. And I'll let you finish up what you were talking about Central Harden and how they played yesterday, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, the Trojans hit several balls at them pretty hard. Um, Central always seemed to be in position to catch that ball or at least uh, not let it get away from them if they didn't glove it uh, right away. Um, and, and yesterday the bats for North Harden were just not what they have been all season. Uh, they struggled to, uh, to get the ball in, the, in play when they did hit it. Uh, it was either a pop-up or a line drive right to uh, a Central Harden defenseman. Uh, I know Central Harden had to be happy about the way they played. I, I think North's kids will tell you they were disappointed. Uh, but they had a great season. Uh, you know, they had some up and downs. And if you look at the win-loss records of, of, of several teams in the district, they, they went on streaks, either losing streaks or winning streaks. But you've got the two hottest teams in the district in the championship game today, and that's what it's supposed to be come tournament time. No surprise at all that these two teams are here. We talked about that all season. It'll be 5-6-7 in the Bruin lineup. Mason Gardner followed by Chase Price and then Sander Lucas. Gardner coming to the plate, 314 on the year. And he took a break during the year. He had started early in the season, had to have a surgery, um, and then eased his way back in. He's been in the starting lineup the past couple of weeks. But early on in the year, he was a big spark plug for him as Brandenburg and Spurrier both were nursing some injuries. That one's low, just low. Want to know. And we've had the first complaint of the umpire, so <laughs> it lasted in six outs. 2 and 0, that one sailed high and away. That's in there for a strike. Three and one now, the count. Gerard works quick on the mound. That was a good strike. Again, nothing really to the inside. That was middle. His other strike was on the outside part. There it is, strike three. Second strikeout of the day for Reed Sherrard. That's going to bring up the center fielder, Chase Price, hitting 338 on the year. Price was one for two yesterday in the game against the North. That one's just down, one and oh. I do like sitting here. I do wish I had a back though. But really see right down from the pitcher. That one was low as well. Yep. That's an inside strike. Really the first time he's gone there today. Two and one. Another fastball, that one on the outside corner. The, the book on Claycomb is inside the batter's box is a strike on the outer half. That one's low, runs it full, three balls and two strikes. This one hit right back to Sherrard. Over to Jennings for the second out of the inning. That's going to bring up the first baseman, Sander Lucas. He's hitting 259 on the year. He pitched for the Bruins yesterday, did an excellent job for him. He worked the plate pretty well yesterday. Can he do that as a hitter? Inside fastball right at the knees. Oh, 
That one all the way back. Now that could come into play right there. They have a miss though and it hits the back and comes all the way back. A runner at third would get out and the catcher never had to move. That one ripped back up the middle. Just past the diving Davis into center field. And Sandra Lucas with the second base hit of the day for the Bruins. So I'm bringing up the designated hitter, Tucker Walters. He comes in hitting 259 on the air. He walked and struck out and was hit by a pitch yesterday when he was up to bat. That curveball in there for a strike. I would say 80% of his pitches today have been fastballs. Mix in a chain, occasional change up that time of curve. That one stays low, gets away from Estes. Lucas did a good job reading that. And trots down to second. So back-to-back -back innings, the Bruins have had a runner in scoring position. One thing that we haven't talked about, we did talk about the outfield being grass, but if a ball, it'll get through the infield pretty quickly, then it comes up to an almost stop as it gets to that wet grass in the outfield. That one in the dirt. Lucas gonna try. Estes kept this one front, throw down, not in time. And there you see the, the sliding part. It is like a slip and slide to an extent. So back-to-back -back wild pitches. Now the one thing having the runner at third does, it puts uh, Jordan Price, the shortstop, back in his regular position. That gets away. Well, Here comes. I think he's going to come home and score. Yes, he is. A base hit and four wild pitches, uh, three wild pitches for the first run of the game. We talked about how it could get to the backstop in a hurry. It is a deeper backstop than we have at North. It's about the same as uh, the, um, maybe a little closer than Central and E-Town, but just got away from Estes and good base running. That was a strike. Oh. Walter Walters thought he had that walk, didn't he? he was, <laughs> he was out of the left-handed batter's box. And what you do is you come back in and you tell the umpire, I'm sorry about that. He'd already taken a pirouette and yep. was starting to trot. That one's low. That will be the walk. So that's how I'm going to bring up the right fielder, Caden Elmore. Elmore hitting 161 on the year. Catches the inside corner. Looked like Estes was it. set up more to the outside. That one came back on the inside. That one fouled off. for a baseball game yesterday uh -huh. or today. Both, yep. both days have been wonderful. Temperatures just right, a little humidity, even though it rained today, there's very little humidity. What wind there is blowing out. <laughs> Strike three. Right, we're but the Bruins put a run on the board. There was one run on one hit. No Elizabethtown errors and one runner left on base as we head to the bottom of the second inning. The Bruins on top. 1-0. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results online at physicaltherapyky.com. E-Town Apartments is a family-owned and operated management service with over 30 years of combined experience. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. 
Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned, family-run pest control company has been serving the surrounding areas since 1976. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank. Let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple online at westpointbank.com. Do up in the bottom of the second inning for the Panthers. It'll be 4-5-6. Price Estes, Austin Jennings, and Eli Barker. Brandenburg remains on the hill. In the game just a couple of weeks ago, Etown struggled offensively early on. They were finally able to scratch one across in the third inning. But Sander Lucas, he faced seven batters in the first two innings. He had two strikes uh, and several ground balls. Brandenburg, I think if he keeps the ball down, he's got the defense behind him. Uh, if there's been any trouble, it's been in the outfield. That was early in the season. Um, a big error in the first time these two played, set up the third and winning run for the Panthers. But the infield has been solid all season. Estes hitting 381 on the year. That one high, 1-0. One That one's inside. 2-0. Allen stays high, runs it 3-0. Afford to be patient here and take a pitch. That's a top of the strike zone. A little slightly expanded. Three and one. Big hack at that one. Full count now. Three balls and two strikes. Chop at it. Laid on his swing. That will be fouled out of play. Looked like he was going to be outside, but he's been calling it. Yeah, him. Right. He, he, especially when it's a left handed batter. He'll give you the black plus another inch or two. Curveball stayed inside. And Estes will be the first base run of the day for. That's going to be a courtesy runner. <laughs> Caleb Irwin, the courtesy runner. Pitchers and catchers get courtesy runners. They can go back inside. Uh, Pitchers get on jackets, stay warm, don't have to run. Catchers get on their gear. It's more for the speed up of the game, not just to get another player in. Average lead away from first. Thompson snap throw down. Irwin back in. Pitch was outside, 1-0 the count. count. Estes is set up on the outside part of the plate again. I wish I'm anticipating the run. <laughs> like he was ready to make the throw to second if the runner took off. That's in there for a strike. Again, I'm telling you, it, it's 
And we can see it even more here. Now at Central Hard, you can see it when you're up above him and at North the same way. He gives, it's the, the opposite handed batter's box is more of the outside strike that he calls. Jennings right up on the plate. That one fouled out of play. Three and two, no outs here. Bottom of the second inning, Central Harden up 1-0. Jennings hitting 258 on the year. Not how you wanted to start this inning. So, back to back, full count walks. So, I think if that's a fastball in the same spot, he calls it a strike. I mean, because it was a changeup, uh, and I don't know, maybe he, I can't tell you. Consistently inconsistent yeah. on that call. Eli Barker, the designated hitter now to hit. 282 on the year is Barker. Third baseman Callie just in on the, what we would call grass, the green part. Sander Lucas at first. Uh, was on the grass as well, not holding on. Coach Stevie Delabar heads out. Now both of these teams will make it to next week's region tournament. It'll be a short drive as it'll be at Elizabethtown High School. They will have the draw later this week. I believe originally they were gonna do Saturday, play four games and I'm not sure if that's still gonna be the case. We'll have to check our local listings. Start throwing strikes. Brandenburg. I'm sorry, no. Brandenburg. Yep. Irwin at second. Jennings at first. That one fouled back. Evens a count at one and one. Can't see any unearned runs come across that plate on. On walks. And these two teams met just a few weeks ago. Barker one for two in that game. That's in there for a strike. Good tight curveball that time. That ball's high. Well, even it at two balls and two strikes. That curveball stayed up. That'll right for three and two. Now both runners that are on obviously got washed, but it was on three two counts. Running the pitch count for Brandenburg up. Oh, that one fouled off. That was a good hard fastball at the knees. Good job by Barker just to get the bat on it. That one fouled off as well. Folks at the pass gate just had to wake up. Yep. It's been staying with fastballs here with three and two. That one just fisted off down the first baseline. Brandenburg lets it go foul.
Cranenberg did a good job getting off the mound that time. If that ball had stayed fair, would have been able to pick it up, probably tag out Barker, but that would have moved the runners up to second and third. They're mowing that grass or not? Whoever that is on the gator is back and forth again all night the other night when the North played Hart <laughs> County. It sounded like a motocross race mm -hmm. back there. Kids seem to be having fun that we're riding it. But mm -hmm. big that one stays high. Ooh. And the bases are loaded with no outs. So you talked about last night, I believe North Harden had the bases loaded and the Bruins were able to work out of that. Hendricks Thomas hitting 263 now comes to the plate for the Panthers. Mountain stays high. Want to know the count? I do not see anyone up getting loose. Chase it after a high fastball. One and one the count. Showing a lot of confidence in the pitcher that he doesn't have anybody up in that goal field. And it stays high. Snap throw to first. I don't know that Sander Lucas was quite ready for that throw down to first as much. Barker did have a big secondary lead. Two and one the count. Curve ball in there for a strike. Well, he is calling, calling that pitch very consistent. Mm -hmm. This may hit towards third, diving stop. Not able to get it. It's Cowley in the first run of the day for the Panthers comes in. We're going to give that a hit or a E5. The official scorekeeper said no hit. So it's an E5. Bases remain loaded, no outs. Here in the bottom of the second, Carter Moberly to the plate. Big swing and a miss. Hitting 275 on the year. That's the kind of play last night. He would have knocked it down and they would have they would have gotten somebody out. Not so tonight. So we hit towards the shortstop. That one goes off a lead. A getting. So it's a fielder's choice for Moberly and an RBI. So it's Hendricks Thomas that is out. Jennings scored their second run. So it'll be runners at the corners with one out. So we get to Reiner Gregory, the left fielder for Elizabethtown. And we have, like, I can't believe there's a shortage of umpires. We have, I don't know, 25 around us right now. Gregory comes in hitting 283. Side strike. Uh -huh. Foul straight back. Had to make a jump. So Brandenburg ahead, 0 and 2 in the count.
Strike three for the second out of the inning. So with runners at the corners and two outs, we head back to the top of the order for the Panthers. Caden Davis is 0 for 1 with a fly out. Lee with it, crossed the diamond in time. But the Panthers able to put two on the board. There were two runs on no hits, two runners left on base. One Central Harden error as we head to the top of the third inning. Central Harden on, or sorry, Elizabethtown on top, two to one over Central Harden. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Tune in weekly for all local HCEC TV programs airing on Brandenburg Telecom and Comcast Cable Channel 2, Spectrum Communications Channel 184, and you can always check out our past broadcast on our YouTube channel. Just search HCEC TV, subscribe to our channel, get all your local community sports and events. We'd also like to thank NFHS, the National Federation of High School Sports, and its support in providing live streaming service. Contact NFHS.com to subscribe today. Well, other than untimely walks, fairly evenly played game. Yeah, when I you mean, walk somebody and then fail to, to catch the ball and get the out with an error. They're lucky to have come out of it with just two. <laughs> for Central, just two runs on that. Bases loaded, no outs. They give up two. But I don't know that I would have expected three runs and only two hits. Um, both of those coming from the Bruins. It'll be one, two, three for the Bruins coming here in the top of the third inning. Lucas Lee, Lucas Thompson, and Kellen Brandenburg. Reed Sherrard remains on the hill. Side corner. 0 and 1. That one's too far outside. Evens it up at 1 and 1. Lee 1 for 1 on the day. He had a single in his first at bat. It was only at bat and stole second. Ended up on third but was stranded there. That curveball in the dirt. 2 and 1. It is. I think that's a bat on one of these metal posts. Yeah, that's that's coming out of the dugout. Dugout? We had a duck call up here Wednesday night. Oh. oh, wow. Leon for the second time today as he draws the walk. It's going to bring up Lucas Thompson. The catcher, he's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Again, I expect Lucas Lee to be running at some point. Thompson really good with the bat. Last year, when he wasn't counted on quite as much, he laid down, or actually when he was an eighth grader, he laid down a lot of bunts. Quick throw over. Throw over again. That one gets away. And Lee will get to second. He's looking at third. Cruz is going to hold him up there. Just 
thing that E1. Runner in scoring position. Now what you're asking Lucas Thompson to do is pull the ball, even if it's a grounder. Because Jordan Price will be the one holding Lee at second. There'll be a big hole between second and third to hit through. Thompson hasn't even taken a pitch yet, has he? Nope, not in this at bat. Yep, that was outside. Squared the bun on that one. If you bunt in this situation, what you want to do is bunt that one towards the third baseman. Because Sherrard will have to come off and cover that side of the mound and squares the bunt. That one catches the strike zone. One and one. <laughs> I always love the both ways calls. No outs here, top of the third inning, two to one, East Town on top. Lucas Lee in scoring position for the Bruins. That one's low. Might let him swing away here. Nope. Squares the bump, bunts it right at the third base. And excellent. That's going to be a base hit. Excellent job. Excellent job. So it'll be runners at the corners with no outs. And Kellen Brandenburg now coming to the plate. Brandenburg 0 for 1 with a ground out to third in his first at bat. And after North Harden, thank you, after North Harden able to get bases loaded with no outs, Bruins come right back now. Runners at the corners with no outs. Thompson will run for himself. He's gone on the first pitch. That one down, won't even draw a throw. One and oh. Pitchers having to work out some jams here. Oh, there's pass ball. That'll score run. And Lucas Lee's going to come across the plate, tie the game up for the Bruins. And again, it was on a wild pitch. Actually, that was more like a pass ball. I think that one just popped out of Estes' glove. Thompson moves up to third. So now what you're asking for is a fly ball. This one back up the middle. Right, That'll yeah. score a run. Davis with the catch. He'll throw it over. Gets Brandenburg. But Brandenburg with the RBI. 4-3 put out. And the Bruins come back to take a 3-2 lead. So if the base is loaded, I'm sorry, base is empty and one out. It'll be Reese Cowley. Cowley 0 for 1 on the day with the ground out. the shortstop price. That wasn't the most confident grab as the ball skipped off the uh, turf. Price does a good job, keep staying with it, makes the play. Two outs now, and that'll bring up Mason Gardner, the left fielder. Gardner 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Again, both of these teams make it to the fifth region tournament next week, held at Elizabethtown. We here at HCC TV plan on covering all of the 17th district games. And hopefully they will meet for a fourth time in the season in the fifth region championship game. That's on the outside corner. 0-2. High in the way. 1-2 now the count. Gardner. Get out. The 
bases. Two and two. Chopper going back to Sherrard. To Jennings for the third out, but the Bruins two runs on no hits, no runners left on base. So we head to the bottom of the third inning. Central Harden back on top, three to two over Elizabethtown. This is a Hardin County Educational Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates with offices in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville. Etownapartments.com. For those who are serving our country in the military, a discount is available. Take a virtual tour today. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling. Located at 311 Steel Drive in Elizabethtown, call 270-972-7206 to talk to someone about scrappy metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating, whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate your problem. And West Point Bank, the five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. Brandenburg will stay on the mound for the Bruins. And it'll be 2-3-4 in the Panther lineup. Jordan Price, Grayson Hayner, and Bryce Estes. Tomorrow night here on HCC TV, we will have the softball semifinals. Those were going to take place today, but the poor weather pushed it back a day. In the opening game, it'll be Central Harden and Fort Knox. And in the nightcap, it'll be Elizabethtown and uh, North Harden. Well, yesterday, he had two at bats, scored two runs, drove in three. It was a pretty offensive affair yesterday. Yeah, he scored they Fort Knox. 15 runs in three innings. Jordan Price to the plate, 0 for 1 on the day as he flew out to right field. That one fouled off. You know, I was thinking about this uh, last night as the scores came in. Uh, Fort Knox, both softball and baseball in the semifinals. And I could not find the last time that happened. Somebody mentioned it last night up in the press box that it had been since, uh, it's, it's been 10 years at least. At least, yep. Yeah where both teams had made it to the semifinals. One and one the count. That's gonna be ripped into right field for a base hit. First hit of the day for the Panthers, Mr. Jordan Price. So with no outs, that's gonna bring up Grayson Hayner. Hayner ground out his only at bat today. lead from Price at first. Oh, you see there Thompson as he was spinning the throw. His feet came out from underneath him. Painter's hitting 453 on the season. And one of the things that's different here, they are not allowed to wear steel spikes at the uh, sports park. And that's the first time I've seen a player slip like that and trying to throw the ball. Good fastball in the inner half. Well, even the count at one and one. Nothing like getting pleated on the slide, you know? Yep. Ooh. Strike three. We've got Painter to chase one out of the strike zone. That's going to bring up the catcher, Bryce Estes. Estes reached on a walk, and then his courtesy runner, Caleb Irwin, scored the first run for the Panthers. Price about half a step further out this time from first. Still stays that one. Popped in the air towards right field. Elmore out there, calls for it. 
makes the catch, and Price retreats. Now that'll bring up the first baseman, Austin Jennings. Jennings also reached on a walk. Came in. Came in for the second run of the day for the Panthers. Feeling now that Brandenburg's kind of settled down a little bit. He's getting strikes called and he's throwing it over the plate. Yep. Really keeping the ball down. He, when he was missing last inning, it was missing up. Sometimes I a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Some of it comes if you shorten your stride, it um, you can good change up that time. It causes the ball to sail. Your foot lands a little bit earlier. If you stretch it out, a lot of times you can get the ball down. Little things like that. Coach Stevie Delabar, former Major League All-Star, um, the pitching coach at Central. Probably gave him a good talking to in between innings. That one's hit hard and deep. Well hit off the bat. Back. Gone. Into the batting cages. Two-run home run by Austin Jennings. And he got all of that high fastball. And Etown goes back on top, four to three. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will have players named to the all-tournament team. Now to the plate, Eli Barker. Barker reached on a walk and was stranded at third. Good hard fastball right down the middle. Change up, fouled off. 0 oh 2 the count. That was close. I will say that was called a strike earlier in the ball game. It was. Stays outside. Oh, even it up at two balls and two strikes. Maybe a little gun shy after giving up that home run. Change up. This is going to be hitting the right center. Marker could have extra bases here. Rounds first. Again, ball slow. Elmore up with it. Throws it back in. But it'll be a double for Eli Barker. And so now that'll bring up Hendricks Thomas. Thomas reached on an error in his first at bat. So with two outs, runner at second, Eli Barker. Good curveball that time. Thomas way out in front of that one. Owen won the count. Outside, one and one. That one stayed down. Two and one. Found out of play. Barker with the conservative lead away from second. As we hit, Callie up with it, crossed the diamond in time. But the Panthers able to put two more on the board from the big fly from Austin Jennings. Two runs on three hits, one runner left on base, and no central hardened errors. 
After three complete, our score four to three, E-Town on top. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, eTown Exterminating, West Point Bank. We'd also like to thank NFHS, the National Federation of High School Sports, and its support in providing live streaming service. Contact NFHS.com to subscribe today. Do up in the top of the fourth for the Bruins. It'll be six, seven, eight in the lineup. Chase Price, Sander Lucas, and Tucker Walters. Reed Sherrard remains on the mound for the Panthers. Again, the fifth region draw will take place later this week. Check your local listings. Our plan at HCC TV is to cover the E-Town and Central Harden games in that fifth region tournament. So coming to the plate, Chase Price. Price 0 for 1 on the day, grounded back to the pitcher and is only at bat. At the bat for the season home number 25, Chase. Swing to that first offering, fouls it away, 0 and 1. Now the thing that Sherrard really starts to get into a rhythm, works fast, hits the ball, that one's outside, one and one, but doesn't waste any time. If he gets into a rhythm like that as a hitter, it'd be good to step out, tie your shoe, do something, try to break it up. That was a ball. That was a ball last inning as well. That's on the outside corner. Two and two now that he... To your point, the batter has not left the box. I mean, he has mm. been right Stays there. alive on that one. Finally gets a break. Swing and a miss at that one. Estes knocks it down, but he'll have to throw it to first. Oh, he put his hand up. I've got to think that I'm surprised Chase Elmore didn't come out and ask at least for an explanation on it. So it does go down as a strike, but it goes down as an error. I thought that looked like Price stuck his hand up, and that's what it hit as the yeah, ball was going down. But no outs. Sander Lucas now to the plate. He squares around to Bunt. Quick throw over, gets away. And now Price will be at least second base. Be third base. Cruz is rounded and come to come to third. Jimmy's just now getting to the ball. And so after the error, now an error on Sherrard. And it's not every day you can strike out and be at third in the same at bat. That's the joy of baseball. Yep. That strikeout was the fourth strikeout of the day for Sherrard. Swings at this one, popped up on the infield. Davis calls for this one. He'll make the catch. And that's going to bring up Tucker Walters. 0 for 0 on the day as he reached on a walk and is only at bat. <laughs> Andrews Thomas cheats in from third, two steps on on the grass. Jennings is full step on the rest. Walters squared around to Bunt, Bunt's that one foul. I'm not sure if E-Town saw the, the sign that was given. I don't think they were or, expecting that at all. Well, no, it looked like E-Town was expecting it. Again, Thomas still two steps in on the grass. Jennings was at least one step on. Like they had read it. Ooh, that oh, that hit him. 
So Walters trots down to first. So it'll be runners at the corners with one out. That'll bring up the right fielder, Caden Elmore. He's 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. That's a strike on the outside part. And Walter's trying to get caught in a rundown. They're just going to give him that second was, base. Uh, that, that's another unusual play right there. I've never seen that before. You? Oh, I've seen where they tried to get caught in a rundown, but <laughs> never seen it where he just gives up that they're not going to get him in a rundown. That has to be the slowest stolen base ever. I was going to say, if you timed it, that's got to be what? Oh, this one bunted into foul seven. territory. <laughs> oh, and two the count now to Elmore. I think if that was on the, uh, the clock, that had to be an 8.5. <laughs> that was an 8.5 second steal. <laughs> I think you could pick locks faster than that. You could have walked there a little faster. <laughs> Strike three on the outside corner for the second out. So now with two outs and runners at second and third, they go back to the top of the order. Lucas Thompson, I'm oh, sorry, Lucas Lee. Lee, one for one on the day, has a single. Also has a run scored. He benefited after walking in his last at bat, an error on a pickoff play, and then a pass ball got him home. Wow. And that catches the outside corner, 0-1. Oh, <laughs> that one's low. Good job by Estes to keep that one in front of him. One and one. <laughs> this one back up the middle, no one there. Only one run is in. Cruz is gonna hold. Walters at third, but an RBI single. Lucas Lee, two for two on the day. As Price scores. Now it brings up Lucas Thompson. Thompson one for two on the day. With a single and a run scored. Also has a stolen base. I'll be interested to see if they send him on this. Not to get caught in a rundown, but would Estes come up throwing with Walters? Walters not fleet of foot. He's now, let me tell you this, on the football field, in the five-yard box, he's as quick as anybody. There goes Lee, curveball. They are going to throw it down. Got him. Oh, oh he called him safe. I think Lee thought he was out because he immediately took his helmet off. I think you're right. And then he holds his hands up like he didn't. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm the catcher, yeah. I do not want Tucker Walters coming at me right over. Almost outside part of the plate. I think it's 0-2. The board says 2-2. Two two. Popped up on the infield. Now, Sherrard should not take it. It's going to be Price. Yep. So there was one run on one hit, one runner left on base, and one E-Town error. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, we're all tied at four apiece between Central Harden and Elizabethtown. This is an HCEC TV student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools, live channel one programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. 
Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. E-Town Apartments is a family owned and operated management service with over 30 years of combined experience. Take a virtual tour today at etownapartments.com. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating is a locally-owned, family-run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas since 1976. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank, let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple online at westpointbank.com. Do up in the bottom of the fourth. It'll be 891 in order for Elizabethtown, Carter Moberly, Ryder Gregory, and Caden Davis. Kellen Brandenburg will remain on the hill for the Bruins. Good high school baseball game. Back yep. and forth. Mm -hmm. Fans are in it and can stay in it because yep. it's not something that is boring. Or you're seeing some things you don't normally see, like an eight-second stolen base. Mm -hmm. Or three consecutive wild pitches. And that was how uh, Central Harden scored. I believe it was Sander Lucas, the first run mm -hmm. of the game. He reached on a walk, and then it was wild pitch, wild pitch, wild pitch, and gets all the way around. And then last inning, had a, a strikeout, then a two-base error on a pickoff, and then a base hit to score him. So all tied at four apiece. Carter Moberly, 0 for 1 on the day. He did reach on a fielder's choice and does have an RBI. Hey, it's neat, we have fans in more down the right field line, along the fence line in the outfield. A few down in the central hard end. Swing and a miss from Moberly. Brandenburg high fastball that time. And stayed up, one and one. It's almost like there's a, a difference in the fastball. So he has one that he really bears down on Throws gets good extension. Then there's that one they just threw there where it, I think he tries to slow his arm down. That one comes a little bit more over the top. His body is falling off a little bit more to our right, his left side. Two and one. That one's fouled out of play. That pitch you were just talking about, it looked like he was caught in between the fastball and the curve ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we used to have it. You called a, uh, a warm up strike or warm-up fastball um, you weren't going to throw it as hard as you would you're just doing it to stay loose but it could come off as a possible change up um, if they really aren't watching the motion that you use on all of your pitches swing and a miss strike out out number one it's the third strikeout on the day for Brandenburg. It's going to bring up Ryder Gregory. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the game. Oh, a good change up that time. Nice pitch. Got him way out in front. Is interesting. Both catchers now predominantly setting up on the outside half of the plate. It's calling for a high fastball here. That one's high and away. That one hit towards the first baseman. It's foul. I said that while ago and yeah. kind of broke away, but <laughs> I don't want to jinx him, but yep. in the tie ball game, you'd like to, like to get those first two outs, take a little pressure yeah. off him. Another good change up. 
back to match strikeouts from Brandenburg. That's going to send us to the top of the order, Caden Davis. Davis 0 for 2 is going to fly out and ground out. Calls for it. Makes the catch, and it's a quick one, two, three inning for Brandenburg. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. We head to the top of the fifth inning. All tied at four apiece. This is HCC TV student production, a division of Hardin County Schools. Special thanks to our live sports coverage sponsors. Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Wondell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, eTownApartments.com, West Point Bank, and eTown Exterminating. Get a reminder, back on the air tomorrow night as it'll be semifinal action for the 17th District Softball Tournament. 5.30 minutes our game will have the Fort Knox Eagles and the Central Harden Bruins screen off and then scheduled at 7.30. It'll be North Harden and Elizabethtown. And then Thursday night, 6 o'clock is the scheduled start time for the championship game. Again, for both of these teams here tonight, Elizabethtown and uh, Central Harden, they both will make next week's region tournament. That will be held at Elizabethtown High School. The draw will happen later this week. And in the opening round, a district champion will play a district runner-up. The only way that... Two teams from the same district can play each other would be in the championship game. So come back to action. It's going to be 3-4-5 in the Bruin lineup. Kellen Brandenburg, Reese Cowley, and Mason Gardner. Brandenburg 0 for 2 on the day with a pair of ground outs, but does have an RBI also. Sherrard remains on the hill. That one in sight. 1-0. Popped up, shallow right, Davis going out. Moberly calls him off and makes the catch. That's going to bring up the third baseman, Reese Cali. Cali 0 for 2 with two ground outs to the shortstop. Reese Cali. Swings of this one hit out towards Davis. Takes it on the big hop over to Jennings for the second out of the inning. So quickly two outs. That's going to bring up Mason Gardner. Gardner 0 for 2 is a strikeout and a ground out. Etown really plays Price into the hole. Between second and third. Swings that first pitch. 0 and 1. Low. 1 and 1. Curveball in there for a strike. One and two now. That one fouled out of play. time. This will be hit out towards shortstop. Price with it quickly across in time. That's a 1-2-3 inning. First one of the 
game for Sherrard. No runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left on base. So we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, all tied at four apiece. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools live channel one programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Rackley, and South Louisville. E-Town Apartments is a family-owned and operated management service with over 30 years of combined experience. For those who are serving our, our country in the military, a discount is available. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff located at 311 Steel Drive in Elizabethtown. E-Town Exterminate is a locally owned family-run pest control company. It's been serving Hardin, Mead, Grayson, and Nelson counties in the surrounding areas since 1976. And West Point Bank with five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point are online at westpointbank.com. Do up for the Panthers. It'll be 2-3-4 in the lineup. Jordan Price, Grayson Hayner, and Bryce Estes. Kellen Brandenburg remains on the bump for the Bruins. Look at the pitch counts. I mean, the pitchers have not had to pitch a whole lot of pitches tonight. I, you know, we haven't been counting them, but I'm thinking, you know, it's, they've not had to work the count a whole lot. Now, Brandenburg got a little uh, in that second <laughs> inning. They sent seven batters to the plate, but he worked a, a three batter inning in the first one, then seven. In the third inning, it was six. Last inning's three. And on the other side, Marie Sherrard, four, five, five, six, three, as far as batters that he has faced. So pretty efficient. And now to play to be Jordan Price. Price one for two on the day. It's a single and a fly out and a run scored. hit towards center field. Chase Price out there. Now it's going to bring up the center fielder, Grayson Hayner. Hayner 0 for 2 on the day as a strikeout and a ground out. Change up in the top of the strike zone. Looked like he had curveball spin, but did not have very much uh, side to side break on that one. 0 and 1. That one's going to be hit hard to center field. Price on his horse running into the gap. Makes the catch on the run. Great job, great read by Chase Price on that one. A really, really well hit ball by Hayner. So Bryce Estes now to the plate. Estes 0 for 1. Reached on a walk and flown out. He also scored a run. The first run of the day for the Panthers. Uh, that one's too far outside. I mean, it's interesting. You look at Thompson, the way that he's setting up. He is actually sent the middle of him is on the uh, the stripe for the left-handed batter's box. Now he's going to set it right in the middle. Now, low and inside, two and zero now the count. That one ripped hard. For the third out. Back to back. Three batter innings. No runs, no hits, no. There is no one left on base. Through five complete. We are all tied at four apiece. And both of the, the, the fans have been in it, but here in these last couple of minutes, especially with some big de big defensive plays, um, the, the energy in the stadium a lot better right now. Um, and we started to see some blue sky overhead after a day of cloudiness and some rain earlier. Again, we do want to thank not only the Sports Park for letting us host it here, but also North Harden for 
allowing it to be moved off of their campus. Um, I think the, the type of plays are what's getting the crowd fired. Oh, yeah. I mean. Oh, those are two. Uh, you know, you talk about the Hainer hit and then the Estes hit there against some different teams. That's a double and a single and a run scored. Um, you know, again, Chase Price, as soon as the Hainer hit the ball, breaking towards that right center, and it was tailing away from him, able to catch up to it. And then Lucas Lee caught it at the high point uh, on that line drive from Estes. He made a great grab. Yep. He got fired up. Yeah. Usually you get fired up when it hits your glove that hard. Sometimes it hurts and you, you express it in a yell of, of happiness, but there's actually some pain behind that. So we head to the top of the sixth. Six, seven, eight in the lineup. Chase Price, Sander Lucas, and Tucker Walters. Okay, Chase Price, 0 for 2 on the day. Uh, reached on an error by the catcher in his last at bat, then moved to third on an error by the pitcher, and then scored on a pass ball. Grounded out in his first at bat today. That one low, 2 and 0. Three and oh, that was close to being a strike. That's a strike on the outside corner. Three and one. That'll be fouled out of play. That'll run the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Strike three. Ooh. Got him looking. So that's going to bring up Sander Lucas. Lucas one for two on the day. It's a single. He scored on three consecutive wild pitches and has a fly out on the infield. That's the sixth strikeout of the day for Gerard. Fast ball there. Curveball in the dirt evens it up one and one. This one back out to second base. Davis there. Oh. That's going to bring up the designated hitter, Tucker Walters. Walters still not an official at bat. He's reached base twice. Just walked and been hit by a pitch and then was credited with a stolen base uh, that was gauged by a sundial. <laughs> without the sun. Four strike. Yeah, without the sun. Not saying that he was slow, but he was trying to get caught in a rundown. Uh, hopefully to create an error, there was a runner on third at the time. This one right back up the middle. Good hit. And Walters now has reached base all three at bats in three different ways. Walk, hit, and hit by pitch. If he gets up again, he's got to reach on an error. So we have a change in the lineup. Uh, we're going to have a pinch runner, but we're also going to have a pinch hitter. Jake so Aaron Noble will be the pinch runner. I believe it's Dalen Flowers for the Bruins who will be hitting. Good lead. Doesn't go on this one. Ball hit right at Jennings. Knocks it down. 
And he'll step on there. First base to end the inning. So there were no runs on one hit, one runner left on base, and no Elizabethtown errors. So we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We remain tied at four apiece. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, eTown Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Again, both of these teams will move on to next week's region tournament held at Elizabethtown High School. We here at HCC TV have all of the games that Central Harden and Elizabethtown play. Bobby, the sun has just poked out yep. here, and this could give some of the outfielders uh, some trouble if it stays mm -hmm. the way it is. It's late yep. in the afternoon, sun's right behind us facing the pitcher. Long shadows. Notice Mason Gardner has on his sunglasses out in left field. I don't think Price nor Elmore have them on. And Elmore did re-enter after Flowers hit for him. Coming to the plate. It'll be five, six, seven. Austin Jennings, Eli Barker, and Hendricks Thomas. Jennings, one for one on the day, He's reached on a walk and hit a towering home run in the third inning, a two run shot. Reached twice, scored twice. Brandenburg remains on the mound for the Bruins. Jennings came into the, today's game hitting 258 on the year. Anticipation is building. Yeah. High ball game, bottom of six. Good change up. And the outside part of the plate got him way out in front. Now, if I'm calling the pitches, I stay slow. I do not throw a fastball. Don't let him catch up to it. Try to throw it slower. Oh, got him fishing on the outside corner. That was into the right-handed batter's box. I'd go slower. I don't think you can Ephus pitch it, but he sets up on the outside part of the plate. Way out in front of that one. Now, if you are going to throw a fastball, you throw high and by high letters, letters to chin. Change up on the outside part. Strikeout. The first down of the inning. Fifth strikeout of the day for Brandenburg. That's now going to bring up Barker. Barker won for uh, one on the day. He's reached on a walk and had a double. Curve ball outside corner. Outside plus. Slow roller back up the middle. Good job by Lee. Can't get out of his glove. Does in time. And got him. With the second out. Now Hendricks Thomas to the plate. Thomas 0 for 2 on the day, reached on an error and has a ground out. Now here in these late innings, he has gone with that off-speed pitch to start several of the batters or a curveball. That was high fastball. Good one. Nobody injured on that foul ball. Uh, it landed. 0 and 1. 
Good reaction time by the crowd on that play. It evens it up at one and one. Off speed. One and two. Really has his E Town hitters out in front. And we fouled out of play. Count remains one ball, two strikes. Got him again. Off speed. It's a one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left on base. Six completed in the books. We're all tied at four apiece. This is a Hardin County Education and Community Television student production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, eTownApartments.com, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, eTown Exterminated, and West Point Bank. We'd also like to thank NFHS, the National Federation of High School Sports, and its support in providing live streaming service. Contact NFHS.com to subscribe today. We've not seen a lot of base runners get the first, but are you surprised that when they do get there, that e -Town has not done what you alluded to at the beginning of the broadcast with, you know, on that second pitch to the second batter taking off? Well, it's usually Central that does that. Um, during the year, E-Town not very aggressive uh, as far as base stealing goes. Um, Central Harden much more. Central Harden, uh, I think their style has been more a small ball as we've gone through the year. You get runners on, you see different players bunting the ball. I mean, uh, Lucas Thompson, your number two hitter up there, lays down a perfect bunt in his second at bat. Um, so Coach Cruz, and kind of got that from Coach Todd Thompson, who was here the last several years. You know, we bunt it, we move people over, we steal bases, and then we we put pressure on the defense. E-Town's a little bit more, we're gonna try to hit a two-run home run just like Austin Jennings did a couple of innings ago. Coming to the plate, it's Lucas Lee. Top of the seventh, district championship. Curveball in there for a strike. Lee is two for two on the day, has reached three times. He reached on a walk. As an RBI, a stolen base, and a run scored. That one in the dirt. One and one. That one fouled off. One and two now, the count. It hit Lee in the batter's box, which is a foul. Clay Coombe going to walk out and give Lee a few extra seconds. One and two the count. Hit out towards the shortstop. Rice with it. Cross in time for the first out. It's going to take us to Lucas Thompson. Thompson is one for three on the day. It's a single and a run scored and a stolen base. Fouled off, 0 and 1. <laughs> that was a hard fastball on the inside part. A little too far inside. Evens it out, one ball, one strike. 
That one stays down, two and one. That one gets away from Estes. Three and one now the count. Turn the lights on here at the sports park. That sun that was briefly out has now been covered up. Ball four. So with one out and a runner at first, it's going to bring up Kellen Brandenburg. Brandenburg 0 for 3 on the day. It's two ground outs and a fly out. It does have an RBI. Stayed up, one to know. Here's where I'd expect Thompson to run. Actually, he's shortened up his lead now, stretches it out to about where he usually is. Nope. Third ball away. Two and no now, they count to Brandenburg. Two and one. With the middle infielders kind of playing towards the second base bag for the double play, there are holes, especially between first and second. He stays on the outside part and goes with the pitch. That one was closer <laughs> than the one before that. The one that was called a strike was further outside than that pitch. Yep. Again, don't mind, I don't mind him calling it, but just be consistent in the call. That stayed outside. Ball four. Back to back walks now issued by Sherrard. Reese Cowley now to the plate. 0 for 3 with three ground outs. Let's chase Greenwell heading to the mound, and it appears as Reed Sherrard's day is going to be done. As his teammates come out from the dugout. Caden Davis. Caden Davis. Get some stats on him. And I believe I saw number four trot out towards second. He's got a 1.81 ERA. One win and three saves. 19 strikeouts to just five walks on the year, 19 innings. In to play Garen Galvin is in. Galvin. He'll be in at second base. So it does not affect their batting order as Sherrard was DH'd for. So Garen just, or Galvin, sorry, just enters in that spot. Will be runners at first and second with just one out. Trying to get a read on Davis here as he warms up. His fastballs, there's not a lot of movement on them. The, the, the speed is lower than Sherrard. So now runners at first and second. Central, you, got, you just want and to get a couple runs here. You don't want this to go to the bottom of seven time. Maurice Cowley, your highest percentage hitter. And E-Town kind of respecting a bunk possibility. See Jennings a couple of steps in at first base. Hendricks Thomas played back even with the bag at third, as so he'll have to cover third. This is going to be hit out towards center field. Hayner out there. Thompson's going to act like he's going to. It'll just be a thrown back in. So Mason Gardner now to the plate. 
with two outs. Out to center field as well. Hayner camped out under it, and so Davis comes in back to back. Flyouts shuts down the threat from Central Harden. There were no runs on no hits, two runners left on base, and no Elizabethtown errors. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning, all tied at four apiece. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. E-Town Apartments is a family-owned and operated management service with over 30 years of combined experience. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned, family-run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976 and West Point Bank. Let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple. Brandenburg will remain on the hill for the Bruins. Due up, it's gonna be 891 Carter Moberly, Ryder Gregory, and Caden Davis. And Brandenburg on a roll of three, he is last nine, actually the last 10 batters, he has gotten out. Um, got out to finish the third and then went one, two, three in the fourth, one, two, three in the fifth, one, two, three in the sixth. Four strikeouts in that stretch too. Thompson comes back out, the catcher for the Bruins. Here comes Carter Moberly. Moberly 0 for 2 on the day. He did reach on a fielder's choice and has an RBI. And the temperature has just dropped in the last few minutes. It's in there for a strike. Sets up outside. That stays outside. Off speed pitch has him chasing after it. One and two now the count. to think, oh, that was close. Two he and two. He looked surprised he didn't call that a strike. Yeah. Come back right with it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. High fastball. So Ryder Gregory now coming to the plate. Gregory 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts on the night. This one ripped into right field. And Elmore thought about throwing it to first base, wisely didn't. So with one out, a runner at first. We head to the top of the order. Caden Davis now to the play. Davis 0 for 3. Two fly outs and a ground out. Now this is interesting. Gregory 
I know in the last game I had of them was like 13 of 15 in stolen bases. 18 of 19 on the season. It's kind of conservative. I didn't get another one. Again, change up right now from Kellen Brandenburg, his best pitch. He has almost every one of these E-Town hitters out in front. And hitters are really not superstitious, but you get into the box and you get set the same place. Almost move up a little bit in the box. Gregory about half a step further this time. This will be hit hard. Gloved it is Cali. Over to Hover for one, not in time to first base, but they do get the lead runner. They get Gregory out at second, so two outs. Davis will be at first base and Jordan Price to the plate. Price one for three on the day with a single and a run scored. And you might have a courtesy runner here for Davis as he is, he is your leadoff here, he's also your pitcher. He will run for himself. Price steps in. That's in there for a strike. Brandenburg kind of quick pitched him that time. I was watching Davis. Davis was still in the middle of a step when the pitch started. Now he takes off at a running lead. This one hit right up the middle, and good play by Lucas Lee. And he gets the ball in his glove and just puts it down on second base for third out. There were no runs on one hit, one runner left on base, and no central hardened errors. We're going to get some free baseball. So we head to the top of the eighth inning, all tied at four apiece. When you go to a championship game, this is the kind of stuff you oh, want to yeah. see. You want to see exactly. kids competing, not giving up, mm. giving every little bit of effort they've got. You know, unfortunately, the, the semifinals that you called yesterday, not very exciting after the first couple innings. Um, obviously, the John Harden's game, uh, E-Town beating them in three, then an eight-nothing game for Central over North Harden. Today, this has been really exciting. I, Last night I called the game, it was 21 to four <laughs> in three innings. Uh, that's hard to call. Well, I got the 15 to nothing game yeah. last night. And I'm gonna tell you, it was, you know your heart goes out to the kids that are, that are yep. beaten that badly. Do up this inning for Central Harden. It'll be six, seven, eight. Chase Price, Sander Lucas, and Tucker Walters. Davis remains on the hill, having come in in the last inning. There were two on with one out. He induces back-to-back -back fly balls to center field. Chase Price now on. Price 0 for 3 on the day. two strikeouts and a ground out, but he, is, he did score a run. After striking out, he reached first after it was misplayed by E-Town. That one outside and low. That one hit down the left field line, slicing, slicing, just foul. That'll even the count up. One and one. Out on the inner half. Good job by Price to hold up on that one. Two and one now the count. There's a strike. Two and two. Curveball. Does a good job just getting a piece of it. Able to get in and reset. Ooh, I 
thought they would check down to third. I don't know if John Edwards would have rung him up. That one's going to be back out towards the short shot. Diving stop. My price not going to be in time. And it's an infield hit for Chase Price. They get the single. That's going to bring up Sander Lucas. Sander one for three on the day. Has a single and a run score. the bunt, bunts the ball towards third. Hendricks Thomas with it. Over to Jennings, he dropped it and pulled, picked it up. He picked it up on time. They tried to sell that he would be safe at first, but a sacrifice, 5-3. Jennings did reach down and grab it before Lucas got to first base. But Price now in scoring position. Tucker Walters to the plate. Walters one for one. He's reached on a walk, hit by pitch, and a single. It looks like Jordan Price will be holding Chase Price on at second. So big hole between second and third. That one high, one and oh. turns to check on Price. That one fouls straight back. That'll even the count at one and one. reaction they didn't much appreciate that call. that's been the strike most of the day if anything it was down two and one now the count to Walters that one stays up and in three and one it's not necessarily a bad thing if you walk Walters here you still have the double play in place you're facing your nine hitter Strike Ooh, right down the middle. That one fouled off. Remains full. Chase Price out at second with one out. It's going to be hit towards center field. Hayner on it. Price retreats to second. Acts like he'll tag. Hayner throws behind him. So two outs. And now it's going to be Caden Elmore to the plate. Elmore 0 for 2 on the day with a pair of strikeouts. Now everybody on defense will retreat to their regular position. That one fouled out of play.
going on the play was Jordan Price, or sorry, Chase Price. They retreat back to second. 0 oh 2 now the count. back in. This one back up the middle. Pass to Dyden Garrick. Price rounding third, coming home. Throw takes him wide. RBI single. Caden Elmore. Now, he got real close to missing third, did Chase Price. But the go-ahead run scored by Chase Price. RBI, Caden Elmore needs out at second base. Lucas Lee now up. Lee two for three on the day. That one high. Alvin doing more of the holding out at second. That one hit foul out. Evens it up one and one. And in the dirt, two and one. Second. That one popped up. Gregory camps under this one. Makes the catch. But the Bruins put one across to take the lead here in the eighth inning. One run on two hits. One runner left on base in Middle Elizabethtown errors. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Central Harden on top, 5 4 over the Panthers. Do up will be three, four, five in the lineup for the Panthers. Grayson Hayner, Bryce Estes, Austin Jennings. Be interesting to see who comes out. And it will be Brandenburg to take the mound. And a big inning for Brandenburg again lately. In the fourth, you face three, you face three in the fifth, three in the sixth, you face four in the seventh, but has really gotten into a good rhythm. He's actually gotten stronger as the game goes mm -hmm. on. Yep. And he was the hard luck loser in the first game that these two played. He had given up two runs, and then um, he was the pitcher on record when the error happened. Uh, that ultimately would lead to the, the winning run for the Panthers, but did the same thing there. Came out, was throwing strikes consistently, uh, did not have near this changeup that he has tonight. Uh, this pitch that has really confused a lot of these Elizabethtown hitters. And it's easy to say that from here and you're not up there because he has a good fastball. He's probably mid 80s, maybe 85, 86. Um, but he throws that change up at about 75 miles an hour and just the change of pace, get your weight all out in front of it. Well, the pressure's on E-Town's batters now. They've got to produce. Grayson Hayner coming to the plate. 
statistically the best hitter on the team at 453 coming into today's 0 for 3. He's got a ground out, strikeout, and a fly out. So E-Town will have to get one across to continue the game. I think Lucas Lee broke his glove. Or I mean, it's Hubbard's glove. Didn't like you switch gloves though. Side, one and oh. On deck is Bryce Estes. Well, there's something in your eye, rocking your shoe. Fouled out of play. Well, even the count at one and one. I'm going to pine away two and one the count. and sets up outside. Off speed pitch, that one got Hainer way out in front of it. And one of the things we gotta do is really control not getting out in front of that. The two strikes shorten your swing up. That was too high. Three and two. But shorten your swing, you time out for fastball, adjust to anything off speed. Well, he's got to come with a strike here. You don't want to put a guy on base without him having to earn it. So. He's right back and through that one. I don't think I've heard him grunt today on the mound. That one he did. It's going to be hard and deep. Oh, going back, gone. going back. Goodbye. We are tied. Grayson Hainer with one swing of the bat ties it up at five apiece. There was no doubt in that one. And with that, Coach Cruz now going to come out to the mound. And usually they would bring in Michael Simpson. This is not him. Bringing in Bradley Copeland. Open only seven innings pitched on the year. This is a sixth appearance. Seven strikeouts to one walk. Has one save on the year, 1.0 ERA. He's given up 10 runs, but only one of those was earned. 
and it'll be it, it doesn't get easier with it'll be Estes followed by Jennings <laughs> So he'll get his warm-ups. Sander Lucas now going to the outfield as Kellen Brandenburg will move over to first base. Elmore will come out of the game, so that's where Copeland is inserted, which is in the nine-hitter spot, which that, uh, in the next inning, they're gonna be two, three, four in the lineup. Again, both these teams move on to next week's region championship. It'll be held at Elizabethtown High School. The draw will happen later this week. And if these two teams were to meet for the fourth time, it would be in the championship game. Tomorrow night, HCUC TV back on air. And so it'll be softball semifinal action. 5.30 match will have the Fort Knox Eagles and the Central Harden Bruins. Followed at 7.30 with the North Harden Trojans and the Elizabethtown Panthers. So no one on, no outs, all tied here in the eighth inning. Bryce Estes now to the plate. Estes 0 for 2 on the day. His last at bat, he one of the hardest balls we've seen snagged by Lucas Lee. He did reach on a walk earlier and scored. Sets up outside. That one back inside. Too far. One and one. That one low. Two and one. And now four strikes. Two and two. Reminder, at the end of this game, we will have players named to the all-tournament team from both sides. We'll then have the presentation of the district runner-up and the district champion trophies. This one back right at Copeland. He knocks it down. Fires the first team for the first ball of the game. That's going to bring up Austin Jennings. Jennings one for two on the day with a big two-run home run. He also has a, another run scored. They're going to put him on. Yep. Purists don't like it. That's the smart play. Now Barker coming to the plate. Barker one for two on the day as a double. Uh, also reached on a walk. And A Town putting in a pinch runner. Caleb Irwin. Herwin was used as the courtesy runner for Estes. So if Estes were to come back up, Irwin could not run for him again. hit earlier in the game, went to right center field with a double that he had. There is room to the right as Hubbard almost playing right up the middle for quick throw over, gets away. Irwin gonna get to second. And Coach Greenwell calling him, throw coming across. Callie and he pulled off the bag. And a two base error on the pickoff. Now if you're Barker, you gotta get it past the infielders. Now Central will bring in the infield. 
I would say all four infielders will be in on the grass. Count 0 and 1. Off speed upstairs, 1 and 1. Copeland steps off. Oh, they're going to put Barker on. So they'll bring back the double play. And so Hendricks Thomas now to the plate with runners at the corners. Thomas on the day, 0 for 3, did reach on an error back in the second inning. This has been an exciting ball game here. Very competitive. Yep. And we're going to have a pinch runner at first. Lex Bratcher into the lineup. Be interested if they take him and run with him. Corners will be in middle infield, playing it about midway. If you're gonna get a double play, you got to make sure you get it. Irwin at third, pitch away. One and zero. Oh. Pitch that time off speed. Thomas out in front. That evens it up at one and one. Bratcher with a very conservative lead at first base. A bunt, push bunt toward first. That's going to do it. That's it. Is a rough off. But scores Irwin from third base. Hendricks what Thomas, game. what in the last inning, the Panthers able to put two across on two hits, the big fly from Grayson Hayner, and then the smallest of the hits, Hendricks Thomas with the push bunt for the win. Etown wins in eight. Six to five. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel One programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. E-Town Apartments is a family owned and operated management service with over 30 years of combined experience. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff. E-Town Exterminating is a locally-owned, family-run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding area since 1976. And West Point Bank, let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple. A back-and-forth game today between these two, and I really would not be surprised if we saw them again next week in the region finals. And we're going to have a presentation of the all-tournament team. There'll be three players named from Central Harden, four players from Elizabethtown, and then the presentation of the district runner-up trophy and the championship trophy, or we should. Both teams going down the line. Oh, here they come. Great year for volleyball wise. I don't know what my dad told you or anything, but 
it was good. It was way to end, but yeah, I'm home. Now I gotta get a big girl job. <laughs> Adult, whatever. But, yeah. How have you been? Good. Doing real well. Yep. It was good. Shame. It was really good. So there are the all tournament team members Lucas Lee, Kellen Brandenburg, and Chase Price. Way to go, Chase! And now, your selection for the all tournament team for E Town, number 10, Grayson Haney. Tournament team: Grayson Hayner, Austin Jennings, Hendricks Thomas, and Reed Sherrard. Now we'll have the presentation of the runner-up trophy and the district championship trophy. The runner-ups for the 2023-17 district tournament are the Central Arden Bruins. Again, both of those teams will move on to next week's fifth region tournament. For Jeff Macy, for Joe Stadden, I am Bobby Thompson saying so long and good night.